Well, good morning and happy Thursday slash fake Monday to you, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from gorgeous, rainy San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. Whose puppet are you? Whose puppet are you? I have some good news and bad news for you, as I do almost daily. You somebody's puppet. You are somebody's puppet. By the end of this video, it is my hope that you will decide to take back the strings and be your own puppet master. Let's go into the concept. Whose puppet are you? What does that mean, Steve? I'm so glad you asked. Who have you handed over the keys to your kingdom to run and rule and reign in your life? Who have you handed over the keys to the realm of your life for someone else to run? Well, I don't do that to nobody, Steve Collins. Really, sugar pie, honey plumber. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you just wake up after an amazing night of sleep. Wonderful, wonderful. The alarm clock glows off and there are birds singing outside your window. Your spouse has made your favorite breakfast. All the kids said, we cleaned our room all night long. We haven't even slept. We're going to sleep all day. It's going to be a beautiful day. You're so excited. You get in your car. Your favorite song is playing on the radio. As you get ready to enter into traffic to go to work, somebody in a red Corvette cuts you off the side of the road and you are almost in the ditch, but you recover. Are you still joyful? Are you still joyful? Or would your day be affected? Would your joy be stolen? Will you place the joy of your heart and your emotional state in the hands of that reckless driver? Would you? Come on guys, we know you would because you're normal, right? My coaching is to help you become abnormal, all right? We wanna help you start playing this life to win instead of playing not to lose. So whose puppet are you? Who do you give control? That's a stranger that you're giving control to your life and your emotions because how you show up is based on what's going on with you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, your mind, will, and emotions, your soul, the way that it's affected by what is around you is the determining factor of whether you are a victim or a victorious person. It is the determining factor of whether you are a thermometer that rises and falls on the circumstances of your life, or if you are a thermostat that sets the tone for your life. Whose puppet are you? This is an ongoing conversation in the family. Of course, I have seven kids. We have now five teens in the house. And the conversation regularly when people say, well, he made me so mad. No, he didn't make you mad. He, he really didn't make you mad. You chose anger as a response. You could have chosen mercy. You could have chosen grace. You could have chosen forgiveness. You could have, you know, said, I'm not gonna let that bother me, but you chose anger. They didn't make you angry. They created an environment for you to manifest the anger that was inside you. Yes, for sure. Well, Steve, that's just crazy talk. Like nobody can do that. That's supernatural or something. A mm, little bit, but let me give you the example. Let's say the same scenario being cut off the road by that reckless red Corvette and you're almost in the ditch. What response can you choose? Here's one you could choose. Hmm, what if that guy driving the car's wife sitting next to him is eight centimeters dilated and they're on the way to the hospital? That could happen. What if he has his four-year-old son in there who fell down from the stairs this morning and broke his arm and who's crying in pain? What if he got a call from hospice saying that his grandmother, who he's very close to, has just a short time left to live and he's trying to get there before she passes? That may be what's happening with them. I'm gonna have grace for them. You see, that's how you extend grace. It's all the story you tell yourself when a circumstance outside of your control occurs. When a circumstance outside of your control occurs, you have the opportunity to choose what story you're going to tell yourself. Well, that stupid son of a guy, I can't believe what kind of... Uh, yeah. That's your story. Mm -hmm. Or you could tell yourself another story. It's really up to you. Whose puppet are you? One of my favorite stories by one of my bravest, most coolest friends, 
was when he was talking to a group of people and they were giving him a very hard time. Now the group of people he was talking to were the very people who were entrusted with disseminating God's word in the Bible. They were called Pharisees and Sadducees. They were sad, you see, because he was taking the ground. But anyway, the Pharisees and the Sadducees began to hammer Jesus on the letter of the law. And he finally said, he goes, you know what, guys, here's the problem. You guys are of your father, the devil, because you're doing his works, man. Oh, they didn't like that at all. But he knew whose puppet they were. Whose puppet are you? Who do you give power to, to control or affect how you show up? Now, I'm not talking about stuff that's easy. I'm talking about stuff that's simple. It's not easy. It's simple. It's not easy because it requires you to have a level of maturity that enables you to have a conversation with yourself in peacetime before you show up for the battle. So that peacetime conversation may be this. You know that video that Steve Collins made that morning? Coach Steve talked about me being a thermostat, not a thermometer. I think the next time someone does something and my initial response is to get riled up and out of control, I think what I'll do is ask myself, how can I choose to handle this situation? What story am I gonna tell myself about them? I did an event with the San Antonio Platinum Top 50 Realtors about a year and a half ago, giving them my greatest line when I'm working with crazy, crazy realtors. By the way, a lot of realtors get crazy. They have one mask for their clients. They have another mask when they deal with each other as realtors. Very wrong, very unprofessional, very sad, very immature. You need to be who you are all the time and treat your colleagues just as good as you treat your clients. But that's another story for another time. And the suggestion I gave when someone gets crazy with me is I would simply say this. I would say, well, Bob, it sounds to me like there's a lot of other things going on in your world right now besides this detail and this transaction. You know, I like to pretend that our clients are in a conference call with us, listening to our conversations every time we talk. And right now, this is not a conversation I'd be really proud of. So would it be better for you if we check back in a little bit later? And you know, that would shut everything down and it would give them a chance to pause. And nine times out of 10, they'll say, Steve, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Here's what's going on and here's what's going on. It's all this other stuff. I mean, you nailed it, man, my apologies. Let's figure this out, work it out together. Because you see, I choose to show up with grace. I choose to show up with mercy. I choose to show up with understanding because I only have one puppet master, y'all, just one. Now, Angela has a significant amount of influence, but she's not my puppet master. We've learned how to communicate with each other. She has a dramatic influence on how I respond, and it may take me a little bit more than a few seconds sometimes when we're in conversation for me to gather myself to choose the response that I'm going to have in that environment that is going to be conducive to a loving, passionate marriage. And yet I have one puppet master. I have one that I listen to, my coach, and I do my best to do what my coach says, do what my coach does and listen for the cues that my coach throws, the audibles that come at any given time during the day, because I've chosen. He's the only one that's gonna have control. Who's your puppet master? And whose puppet are you? Have a great day, guys.